As you're all probably aware, the new movie called Anyone But You featuring Sydney Sweeney and Gwen Powell has recently been released in theaters and it has been a smash hit with the song Unwritten finally going back to the charts. And the number one thing that I came away with when leaving the theater was the fact that this really reminded me of this Shakespeare play called Much Ado About Nothing. And when I searched it up, turns out this is a very loose retelling. And this made me kind of think like, is this the next rom-com that's gonna follow in the steps of She's the Man that adapted Twelfth Night or Ten Things I Hate About You, which adapted The Taming of the Shrew and became a staple in the rom-com genre? And most importantly for Hollywood producers, is Shakespeare the secret magical ingredient that just makes the rom-coms work? Well, do not worry because I decided to make this video to point out every single thing you missed in anyone but you. Before we continue, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this and so that YouTube can notice this video. The movie starts off with Ben and Bea running into each other, having a little fling, but then ultimately leaving each other due to a miscommunication. Similarly, in the play, Beatrice and Benedict, the characters that inspired Ben and Bea respectively, also have a run-in before the play starts and also separates because of a miscommunication. The miscommunication in question is that Peter, Ben's friend, has a chat with him and Ben tries to play the macho man and deny any of his feelings for B. B overhears this and runs away. Peter in the movie is Ben's friend and Claudia's brother. However, in the play, he is known as Don Pedro and instead of being Benedict's friend, he is actually Claudio's friend because Claudia and Claudio are gender swapped. Don Pedro plays the crucial role of being the one that's supposed to seduce Hero in the name of Claudio because Claudio is quite shy, quite awkward, and Don Pedro's got a lot of riz. This happens at the Masquerade Ball, which is a very central part to the plot because it is where no one really knows who anyone is and a lot of this falling in love, falling out of love occurs. In the movie, Ben and B reunite when it turns out that Hallie, B's sister, and Claudia, Pete's sister, are getting married. Something to note is that where in the movie Claudia and Hallie are in a very happy relationship, in the play, Claudio and Hero are actually used to contrast their relationship with the relationship of Benedict and Beatrice, showing that Benedict and Beatrice's love is very real and full of chemistry, where Claudio and Hero are together just for vain reasons, or at least that their love is much less profound. They're also not a couple at the start of the play, like I already mentioned, Claudio asks Don Pedro to cosplay as him in order to seduce Hero. And do you remember the promo that Claudia and Hallie did for their wedding where there's an objection and everything? That is actually a reference to their first wedding in the play, which didn't work out because Claudio objects thinking that Hero is unfaithful to him, which causes Hero to fake her death. I don't really know how they would have included that in the adaptation. When they're already in Australia, B runs into her ex, John, who is invited by her father, Leo. Leo is the equivalent of Leonato, who is the Duke of Messina, where the entire play is set. He is originally the father of Hero, but not the father of Beatrice. Beatrice is actually just the cousin. And John, B's ex, is actually called Don John in the play and he doesn't want to get with B, he wants to get with Hero. <laughs> Where in the movie, all the love and intrigue is based on B and Benedict. In the play, a lot of the focus is actually on Hero and Claudio. Building on that thought, Margaret is introduced in the movie as Ben's ex, but in reality, in the play, she has a fling with a guy called Boraccio in front of a window to make Claudio jealous, which then leads to the termination of Claudio and Hero's first marriage. And you probably guessed correctly that Boraccio was then turned into Bo, the weird surfer guy. <laughs> Something from the play that I thought was very interestingly incorporated into Anyone But You was the idea of the talking very loudly to be overheard to gaslight and manipulate B and Ben to falling in love with each other, because this is exactly the same thing that happens in the play. In the play, this is very serious. Benedict and Beatrice have no clue what's going on and they fully believe all the 
manipulation that is going on around them. And this is done because Don Pedro believes that Benedict and Beatrice are the only two for each other and that they just must fall in love. In the movie they did something very clever which I really enjoyed and it was that they essentially play this for laughs because obviously the concept is quite ludicrous that the lovers wouldn't catch on to what is going on and it is also very nicely incorporated into the entire idea of Hallie and Claudia's wedding because it is they do it so that the wedding isn't messed up any more than they already managed to mess things up earlier. The play ends with a double marriage of, on one side, Claudio and Hero, and on the other side, Benedict and Beatrice. The ending of the movie does a little play on this where, yes, we do get that one wedding of Claudia and Hallie, but on the other side, we get a love declaration from Benedict to B, and of course, Q unwritten. The movie decided to use some direct quotes from Shakespeare and they always give a little nod to the Shakespeare fans by having the character say, oh, I just made that up. They do this twice. The first one is when Peter and Claudia's father do the whole thing when they're trying to convince Benedict that B is in love with him. And Peter says, some cupids kill with arrows and some with traps. This is actually lifted from Act 3, Scene 1, and it's actually Hero's line. And the context of this is that Hero is talking to her maid Ursula and trying to convince Beatrice that Ben is in love with her. So it's kind of the opposite. This is right after that scene when Hero's kind of like, oh my god, this is actually working, guys. Like, damn. And the second time a quote is lifted directly from the script is during the wedding scene between Hallie and Claudia, when Hallie says, I love you with so much of my heart, there is none left to protest. This is lifted from Act 4, Scene 1, and it is from Beatrice originally when she professes her love to Benedict, right before she asks Benedict to kill Claudio. Yeah, there's so much drama in the original play, guys. Like, holy smokes. Now, the last segment that I have for you are some rapid-fire Easter eggs that the producers left in from the original play. Firstly, Beast's surname is revealed to be Messina, just like the original setting. Secondly, Leo says abbondanza, which is an Italian toast meaning to live a plenty, and it's also a reference to the original Italian setting. When B walks out of Ben's apartment in the beginning, there's graffiti that says, here's much to do with hate, but more to do with love. This is actually not a quote from Much To Do About Nothing, it's a quote from Romeo and Juliet. Next, in the pre-wedding party, which actually is a, a loose adaptation of the masquerade ball in the start of the play, it is written to bait the hook well, the fish will bite. The book that B reads is titled Men Were Deceivers Ever, and this is a quote from Act 2, Scene 3. And at the end of the movie, during the unwritten segment, there is a sign that says, much ado about nothing directly calling out which play this is based on. Alright, I really hope you enjoyed this quick little video about Much Ado About Nothing and its adaptation in anyone but you. So, what do you think? Is Shakespeare the secret ingredient to a, the perfect rom-com? Are Shakespeare retellings even relevant still? Should, is there any merit in talking about him? Let me know in the comments down below and don't remember to like, comment, and subscribe. That's all for me and I'll see you next time.